A. B. L. A. N. C. A. Cresta. Blanca. Cresta Blanca. From the cool limestone caves of historic Cresta Blanca winery comes Cresta Blanca California Sauterne, a delightful compliment to your meal, the wine of sheer delight. Cresta Blanca Wine Company, Livermore, California. Amos and Andy will return at the same time week after next. and Cynthia Barry, aspiring young actress, have announced their engagement. Well, congratulations, son, and the best of luck to you, Andy. Yeah, Emma, this is the real thing, all right. I'm finally going to snip the orange blossom. Yeah, but the thing happened so fast, Andy, you didn't tell nobody nothing about it. Well, uh, this is one of them whirlpool courtships. Uh, we swept each other off our feet. Yeah, you said a girl for actress, huh? Uh, is she with the legitimate theater? Oh, yeah. She wouldn't be connected with nothing crooked. <laughs> oh, and is she on the stage? Oh, yeah. She's with a little theater group that puts on plays up in that little theater on 148th Street. Oh. Well, she sure is young and pretty, Andy. Mm -hmm. But you know, Andy, man and a gal that want to be an actress, well, they got interests of their own, all their friends is actors, and they mix it in fast freckles. It might be pretty hard to keep up with her. Well, I ain't exactly rushing into this thing, Amos. The one thing definite I made with Cynthia is we're going to have a long engagement so we can really get to know each other. Oh, that's a good idea, Andy. Yeah, I may not marry her for three or four days yet. <laughs> when can I meet the girl? You got me all excited. Well, like I say, uh, she rehearsing a play and she's pretty busy. I ain't seen her myself till tonight. Well, I sure hope this works out for you this time, Andy. Because when it comes to gals, you sure has your troubles. Well, don't worry about me marrying Cynthia Amos. I is the only man in her life. <laughs> oh, come on in, Andy. Oh, hello, honey. You know, honey, I'm just dying to spend the evening with you alone. Uh, honey, you didn't start smoking cigars, did you? Oh, no, Andy. We're so far behind in our rehearsal that the leading man and I have got to rehearse some of our scenes here tonight. I'm terribly sorry, but it just can't be helped. No, oh, I don't want to interfere with your career. Nothing like that. Come on. I want you to meet him. Uh, yeah. Andy, I want you to meet Mr. Bosworth Carruthers. And Bosworth, this is my fiancé, Mr. Brown. Greetings, Mr. Brown. Words are inadequate to express my delight at this meeting, sir. Uh, likewise, I think. <laughs> uh, go ahead and start rehearsing. I'll set you in what? Now, Andy, here's the script. The play is called The Angry Sea. You can follow it if you want. We're going to do the big dramatic scene here on page 14. Yeah. Now, Cynthia, remember, in this scene, we're aboard a merchant ship in the middle of the Pacific. And this can be the rail. The sea is raging. The boat is rocking to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. We are carrying a load of contraband gold. The Coast Guard is on our heels as we speed ahead. The crow's nest up above is shaking crazily in the wind, creaking and cracking. You want me to surrender because you love me so passionately. We're so madly in love, we're unmindful of the danger. Our two hearts are beating as one, and we are alone. <coughs> All right, Bosworth, let's try it. Oh, my darling, how long I've waited for this moment. No treasure that I could find could be as great as the treasure I hold in my arms. My darling, how long I've waited for those words. Hold me tight. These are moments they can never take away from us. Oh, my darling. 
I'm yours forever. Uh, how about rehearsing this scene while you down in the boiler room and shoveling coal? Please, Daniel. Don't it. Yes, Mr. Brown. Please leave us alone. This is most annoying. I don't know what you got to complain about. Oh, uh, Bill, let's continue. I couldn't say these things before. But now that we're free to speak, tell me that you care. No, no. It would be unfair to Tommy. You mean Tommy's gonna get in on this too? <laughs> I care only for your happiness. If you want me to go, I'll go. Just say the word. Tell me you hate me and I'll go. Go ahead and tell him, honey. Come on, Dandy. We can't rehearse. You're interrupting. Yes, Mr. Brown. I've tried to be very patient with you here. But it's impossible to accomplish anything unless you go. Well, I ain't going until I find out how this love scene ends. I'm staying. <laughs> well, if you're staying, Mr. Brown, I'm leaving. Because it's impossible to accomplish anything under these conditions. Bosworth! I'll see you at the theater in the morning, Cynthia. But Bosworth! Farewell. Oh, Andy, I wish you'd understand. This play is so important to me. Well, our marriage is important to me, and we're supposed to get married in the next few days. I know I promised, but you'll just have to wait until the play opens, and I'm settled. You mean I gotta sit around a whole week and watch this Bosworth make love to you? Andy, you must realize this is just a play. And we're only actors. Why, when we're making love up there on the stage, it doesn't mean anything. But Bosworth can turn his emotions on and off like a faucet. Well, it seems to me that no matter which faucet he turns on, it always comes out hot. <laughs> you just have to learn to understand. Yeah, well, for your sake, honey, I'll try. And who knows? Someday you may be proud of me. Someday I may be another Sarah Bernard. So that's the situation, Kingfish. Here I is engaged to the gallon for five days. Now I've had to sit around while this other guy is kissing her. Yeah, I see what you mean. In other words, you own the beehive, but he getting all the honey. <laughs> I don't know what to do about it, Kingfish. She's all set on this acting career, and she figured that someday she might become another Sarah Hardburn or something. <laughs> And if this here play what she acting in gonna be a hit, she'd be smooching with that same guy from 8 to 11, seven nights a week, 52 weeks a year. Yeah, that's right. And I tell you, Andy, when you meet her at the stage door, you'll be lucky if she even shake hands with you. <laughs> well, what's the fella supposed to do this married to an actress? Now, wait a minute, Andy. I think I'm getting an idea here that would be some help to you. Did you ever heard of Alfred Lunt and Lynn Fontaine? Oh, yeah. There's the husband-wife actor. Yeah, now, there's a fella that had the perfect solution. He was always acting in the same play with his wife. And if there was any smooching in the play, he is the exclusive smoochie. <laughs> What's that got to do with me? Uh, listen, Andy. If something was to happen to this fella Carruthers, they after the mar, and you were to step into the part and be a hit, then you'll never have to worry no more about some other actor making love to your wife. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Kingfish. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, in the first place, what does I know about being an actor? Well, Andy, uh, you've been watching this here play rehearse so much, you should know every line in it. Oh, yeah, I know all the lines. And then you were in a couple of the large hall plays a few years ago, and if I remembered right, you were pretty good. Well, they didn't throw nothing at me. So, if you let some drama teacher brush you up in the next 48 hours, and you know the part like you do, why, well, you could step right in there. Yeah. Uh, well, saying that all goes smooth, uh, how is we going to get rid of this fellow Carruthers? Andy, leave that part to me. Every actor has his weak spot, and I know just what it is. <laughs> well, okay, Kingfish, if you say so, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, you see, I'm in love with Cynthia, and that's the only way I can hold on to her. Yeah. In the next 48 hours, I is going to become an actor. A-I-I. <laughs> -I -I. 
E I E O I O I A I I E I E O I O I Very good, very good, Mr. Brown. Now, let's do it together. A I I E I E O I O I A I I E I E O I O I a I I E I E O I O I A I I E I E O I O I A I I That sounds like the chorus of old MacDonald had a Well, I think you've got your vowel sounds down very good, Mr. Brown. And uh, considering the short time we worked together, I think you've done very well indeed. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, now, before you go, uh, let's try the emotional reactions once more. You know, those are very important. Uh, yes, ma'am. Now, ready? I'm uh, ready. All right. Happiness. Fear. <laughs> Hate. <laughs> Ignorance. <laughs> Excellent. But wait a minute, I ain't done nothing yet. Oh, oh sorry. Let's try your most important emotional reaction, which is the uh, love. Uh, uh, that's enough, that's enough of that. Uh, we'll better take a line from your play. Now you listen carefully to how I do it. Oh, my darling, how long I've waited for this moment. No treasure that I could find could be as great as the treasure that I hold in my arms. Oh, my darling, how long I've waited for this moment. No treasure I could find could be as great as the treasure I hold in my arms. My darling, how long I have waited for these words. Hold me tight. These is moments they'll never take away from me. Uh, what do you think? Pretty good, but it could be better. The only thing is, when you look the gal in the eye and say them pretty things, it don't sound like you mean it. You ain't sincere. Well, it's hard to be sincere when the leading lady is Calhoun. Oh, <laughs> well, look here, I'll show you. Oh, my darling. How long have I waited for this moment? Crush me! Crush me in your big, strong, manly arms! Well, that's the trouble, all right. Gentlemen, <laughs> you ask me, it is a waste of time. Annie don't need no rehearsal for a scene like this. You don't, huh? No! Teaching Annie to make love is like teaching a horse to eat oats. It ain't necessary. Ah, King, his eyes is as red as I ever gonna be. The important thing is what's gonna happen to Carruthers. How you figure on getting him out of that play tomorrow? Don't worry about a thing, Andy. Tomorrow afternoon at exactly three, I goes into action. Just keep right on rehearsing here. You mean we gotta go through this thing again? Oh uh, yeah, the same love scene. All right. Oh my darling, how long I've waited for this moment. Crush me, crush me in your big strong manly arms, my sweet. Uh, wait a minute, Calhoun. I think I can do it better this way. Mr. Carruthers? That's right. Well, I saw your last rehearsal this afternoon. I thought I'd drop by to chit-chat with you. Oh, I see. I didn't get your name. Well, my name is George Stevens, and I'm the dramatic critic of the New York Sentinel. Oh, really? Well, sit right down. Yeah, uh, thank you. Not at all. Well, I never uh, review these uh, little theater groups, but I just happened to be in the neighborhood and dropped in. Oh, I'm so glad you did. Uh, tell me, what did you think of the, uh, <clears throat> rehearsal? Well, Mr. Crothers, we get right to the point. It's my professional opinion that you got a turkey on your hand there. A uh, turkey? That's right. King size. Well, I knew it wasn't a great play, but I thought it had some merit. Well, Mr. Carruthers, uh, you yourself is only decent performer in the whole mess. But the trouble is, if I give the play a bad review, that's gonna hurt you too. Why, yes, I couldn't have a thing like that happen at this stage of my career. You know, I've had uh, two or three unfortunate plays recently. Yeah, I know all about that. But matter of fact, I was thinking of spotting my column tomorrow with this headline, Carruthers Lays Another. Oh, this is terrible. Why, a thing like that could, could finish my career. Well, if I was you, I'd pull out of this before it's too late. But it opens tonight. However,
However, I still have my career to think of. Well, suppose you had a fast case of laryngitis. Laryngitis? Hey, that's a wonderful idea. I can tell them I have laryngitis. <laughs> Here these actors have rehearsed for weeks, and they're ready to open. And my leading man gets laryngitis. Well, I think Andy did the part very well, Mr. Fredericks. Yeah, I know this backwards and forwards. Well, you're no Carruthers, but we're supposed to open in two hours. I suppose I have no choice. All right, Brown, you have the lead. Thank you, Mr. Fredericks. And I guarantee to give you a performance you'll never forget. A-E-I-O-U. <coughs> A-E-I-O-U. Well, your voice sound better, Andy, after that spraying that took the ping out of there. Yeah, I guess I'm all right now. Hey, look, Kingfish. I got a lot of telegrams from Amos and some of the other brothers. Well, we all rooting for you, Andy. Yeah, well, I sure put all my friends to a lot of trouble, but at least I got this fellow Bosworth out of the picture. And from now on, it's going to be just me and Cynthia. Yeah, and I got everything all set for the play tonight. Yeah, well, uh, uh, you're going to be out there in the wings with the scripts in case I get nervous and miss some of my lines, ain't you? Oh, yeah, I'll be out there and uh, prompt you in case you get in trouble. Oh, yeah, yeah. You ready, Mr. Brown? Yeah, all set. Well, uh, you'd better get into your clothes. I'm going out now to make the announcement about your substitution. Well, you just go right ahead and don't worry about a thing. All right, Andy, I'll help you here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Due to an unfortunate case of laryngitis, Mr. Bosworth Carruthers will not appear tonight in the presentation of our new play, The Angry Sea. Stepping into his role will be Mr. Andrew H. Brown. We sincerely hope that you will enjoy Mr. Brown's performance and the show. Thank you. The curtain going up, Andy. Good luck to you, son. All right, take the curtain up now. Sure is a language sea out there today, Frank. Yeah. I'll tell you, Sam. I don't like anything about this cruise. If I'd have known what it was all about before I signed on, I wouldn't be here now. Wait a minute. I hear the captain coming down the deck. I'm going to find out once and for all where we're headed. For. I said I hear the captain coming down the deck. <coughs> See down there. Now, yeah, no, I was just in it. No, sir. If we know we're carrying a load of illegal gold. Meaning what? Meaning we'd like to know where we're headed. Listen, you, as long as I'm skipper of this boat, you mind your own business. Understand? Look! Look off to the starboard. It's the Coast Guard cutter. I see here. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Men were gonna have to run for it. Frank? You go down in the boiler room and order full steam ahead. Right. Sam, you stay here and keep an eye on them while I go up on the bridge and man the gun. Aye, right, sir. Never mind the gun. I'll use a knife. <laughs> on second thought, you better go down below decks and put the crew on guard. Aye, right, sir. John, I must speak to you right away. You get below. But, John, you can't escape the law. The Coast Guard is closing in on you. There's no turning back now, my dear. But, John, darling, I love you too much to let you do it. You mean so much to me. After all, is this the legal gold that you're carrying with it? Cynthia, darling, no treasure I could find could ever be... Uh, no treasure I could find could... No treasure... Greater the treasure that I hold in my arms, idiot. Could be as great as the treasure I hold in my arms, you idiot. Oh, they're closing in on you. They'll send you to prison. I can't bear the thought of it. Oh. oh, 
my poor sparrow. I'm gonna take her below. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take her below. Let me help you out of the angry sea. Skipper, the Coast Guard's closing in on us and we can't go any faster. I have changed my mind. I'm turning this cargo over to the authorities. Where's the white guy? White dog! Uh, what's the next scene, Kinky? Well, this is where you had a fight with the first mate, remember? He hits you across the head with that kick bench out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Say, what's this I hear about you giving up to the Coast Guard? Them's my orders. Listen, I signed on for that gold and I'm not giving up that easy. I've ordered the crew to make a run for it. If you take one step toward that engine room, you reckon with me. Why, you... Oh, what you got there? This is the trick bench for the fight scene. My truck broke down and I couldn't get here any sooner. Well, what kind of bench is that they got out there on the stage? That's a real bench. They've just been using for the rehearsal. Couldn't hit him with that. That's made of solid oak. This thing I got here breaks away as soon as it makes contact. And you don't get hurt. Holy mackerel. Put that thing down and fight like a man. Don't lose the bench. Put that thing down and fight like a man. You'll never get away with this. Don't use it. I'll fight to death. Don't, don't use the bench, I said. <laughs> I'll get you, you dirty double cross. Don't use the bench. Don't use the bench. I'll fight to death for what's right. I'll get you, you dirty double cross. Oh, yeah. What's that, honey? I just got a part 
in a new play. A new play? It's not like the other one. It's entirely different. Oh, well, uh, I'm glad to hear that, honey. Uh, uh, what's it about? It's all about me on a desert island. Honey, is you on this island alone? Oh, no, Andy. The play is called Six Men and a Girl. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, come here. Oh, me. I wonder what Alfred Lunt would do in a cage like this. <laughs> 